Hey guys, I made my first 18650 battery packs. And in this video, I really would like to share the design with you guys and how to assemble this. But before we move on to that, I really want to show you guys a little disclaimer because I do not want to be held responsible if you guys burn down your house. Initial, I planned to make a video from start to finish on how I built the specs and how I hook them up and what the result is. But since this crisis, all the delivery, the deliveries of the parts that I ordered are delayed. So right now I'm going to show you how you guys make this spec. In my next video, I really hope I can show you guys how to hook this up to the BMS, to the solar charge controller and hopefully what the result will be. So, I'm gonna throw everything on the table and show you guys how to assemble this thing. So to build a pack like this, this is all we need. Uh, of course, the plastic parts that I've printed out, uh, the link will be in the description below the video. Um, eight zip tights. Uh, they don't have to be as small as this, but they don't have to be too big either. Then I've got two of these M3 screws um, this is m3 by 20 millimeter and then i got two m3 by 10 millimeter it doesn't matter if you use 25 or 30 millimeters uh, i designed this for the 20 millimeters but there's enough space to use bigger ones on the other side i've got the cable this is eight and a half inch or 22 centimeters 12 avg wire um, two and a half millimeter the solid copper wire so uh, this is rated up to 20 amps my solar charge controller only allows 15 amps so this should be enough then I've got some heat shrink and of course the XT60 connector so let's start building this give ourselves some room before I can actually Constructed, I always want prefer to prepare the parts. Um, this one is made for the XT60 connector. It goes in here, but there's a little bit of support that I have to cut out, just like the holes. As you can see, I have to drill out the support, and this hole should be 2.6 millimeters. So I'm going to use the drill and make sure that this the exact diameter. And as you can see, it's printed with support, so I have to clear this one out and take this out. So once that has been done, uh, we're going to start with the main wiring or the bush bars, like they call it. Um, it's very. Oh, I still need to take this one out. It's very easy. Um, this part until here, I'm going to strip down. solid wire and we are going to bend it right here so it ducks down into the back So now we are going to make sure that this doesn't move anymore. So we're going to place zip ties around them. I made those holes with a little support on the inside. So we can strip it around there. Just like this.
there you go. Now the boost bar is nice and decent hooked up. So as you can see, if I turn it to the side, there's nothing sticking out, not even a zip tie. So if you place it on a flat surface, normally um, there won't be any conduction and it won't be wobbling. So next we want to have a, a clean package. So we are going to cut off all the zip ties. And there you go. First part has been or has been done. Next we're going to do the same thing for the positive side. So Now both sides are done, next thing we are going to do is place the batteries in there. The full, well I like, I prefer to do like this, the closed side will be the negative side and the side with the XT60 connector will be the positive side. So we get this kind of setup. So these are cells that I salvaged from uh, old battery packs of a drill bit. These are 2000 milliamp cells and they all have been tested and they still have their full capacity so that's actually a very good thing. Um, I do advise if you use used cells to do all necessary tests. I'm gonna explain how it actually works. There are a lot of good videos out there who will actually are better in explaining the way how you should test these. Also, I will post a link in the description from a forum where you can find everything you want to know about those second hands or used cells. Uh, there's even a database if you open up a laptop and you find batteries inside of it that you can actually check what the original specs are. So, this one with XC60 connector is going on top. Don't push too hard because you can break those little bumps to prevent, these are to prevent the batteries of falling out. Oh wait, I forgot the support here. Next, what we're going to do is actually tighten this down. So. I made an option, uh, there are holes on both sides, so you can choose where you want to actually hook them up. I prefer to do it in the back, um, this isn't, an, isn't used then, uh, because there are two holes at this side, I also forgot this one, and then you make one solid back and it doesn't come apart like this one. So like I said in the beginning of the video, Take your time and prepare the plastic parts first, otherwise you'll end up like me with disassembling everything a couple of times to make sure that all the supports are out. So like I was saying, um, I use this side so that the, the screws are all on the same side. You can also use this side to drill it down, there's a space of 5 millimeters at each side to torque in. So that's why I drilled it out with two and a half millimeter. It should be fine if you print because it's set to 2.6 or 2.7. I'm not sure exactly. But right now, this is where the first bolt gets in the 20 millimeter, 25 or 30 millimeter. And there you go, a pretty solid pack now. Before I start with hooking these up, I'm actually going to 
solder the XT660 connector into place. Why? If you hook these up and you start playing with these wires, it's very easy to make a short and then in best case scenario nothing happens, but worst case you can throw the pack away or it starts burning. So now we are going to do the XT60 connector. And there you go, it's already snuck in there. So the street side is the plus, it's even marked with a little plus on the side, I don't know if you guys can see it. So that's the straight side and the other side is of course the minus. So the plus is on top, that's this wire. So this should go, oh, this has to go on the right side over here. them a bit like this. Next, something I always forget so I really advise you guys to do that before you start soldering is the shrink tube. Another thing I advise you guys use is some flux because it's really hard to make everything at a big temp at the high temperature if you use a small tip like I am so but be careful because if you use too much uh, everything starts become to become messy so supply a little on here that should do it and next we are going to solder this one And now we got a pretty clean connection. Now the only thing left to do is bend this in place and attach the negative side. And now we can measure the negative one. Don't make this too short because you can actually put a little bit of stress on this side and then the lid that has to go here doesn't fit in anymore. So. Now, to get this into place, we are going to put the lid on top of it. Like this. First thing that I want to do is put in the 20 millimeter bolt on this side. After that, you can wiggle a little with the connector to get it perfectly into place. So the M3 bolt of 20 millimeter. And there you go, two bolts here, two bolts here, and we've got a solid pack that doesn't come loose. Now, if you ever have a problem with one of these batteries, you can do a couple of things, or you can just, after unhooking the fuse wire, melt this little bolt down and push the battery out, put it back in uh, with some hot glue, you can fix it again, or you can completely disassemble the pack and replace the fuse. Uh, replace replace the cell but next what we are going to do is hook up all the connections so we got a 10 p cell now I forgot to mention to show this in the beginning of the video but for this we are going to use some fuse wire I don't know if you guys can see it it's really really thin this should prevent um, if uh, there's a short that batteries will get damaged or in case of changing polarity I don't really know how that happens but this is just to well 
like adding an extra insurance on your battery packs. So, but before we can actually solder on this, you see those little uh, those four dots on every uh, cell. This was um, these were actually spot welded, but uh, since I don't get a spot welder, I'm going to do it with my soldering iron. There's a lot of discussion going on about if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but then again, a lot of guys say they never found any problem with it. So, to solder on this, I would really want to prevent too much heat, so I'm going to put, again, flux on every cell. Like this, this is looking pretty good. Of course, I would suggest suggest to clean off the residue of the flux and next flip it over and do the same on the other side. And finally, the fuse wire. Just like this and now we're going to continue to do the old pack on both sides and when that's done I'm going to actually solder them down to the bush bar. And there you go, all the fuses are into place right now, the only thing that I still need to do is hook them up, well, solder them down to the bush bar. So. And there we go, now we got everything soldered down, so now we got a 10p pack, this is for something about 20 amps. Before I actually going to charge or discharge this thing, I let it rest because even though it doesn't damage anything, like they say, I really like to, I don't like to put a lot of stress on these batteries. So right now I'm just going to leave them for a day and then I'll be first charging or discharging them. Okay guys, I'm ready with my four packs right now. So this is a 4S10P pack or will be in the future. They are ready to get connected to the BMS and the BMS will be connected to the solar charge controller if the parts get delivered. So the whole idea behind this connector is that it's really easy to plug in and pull out again if you want to work on it. If you build a pack like this, I strongly recommend to not use these for higher currents because the limitations of the cave of the bush bar. So if you like this design, Give it a thumbs up if you got any suggestions for me because I'm really just getting into these batteries. Let me know in the comments below and hopefully when the rest of the parts arrive, maybe next week, I can show you guys an update or I can move on with this project. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.